Hi, good morning, everyone. We are so excited to have you here on today's webinar. Um, today, we're going to be talking about how to handle fluctuating material and labor costs. And due to the nature of that topic, um, we wanted to have several voices giving their input in this discussion. So I want to introduce you to our awesome panelists, Kurt Klesnick from Lifetime Construction, Gary Myers from Clark Construction, and Jeff Semple from Join. Before we get started, I do want to remind everyone that you're all free to send in questions anytime. We will get to them as we can. Without further ado, I'd like for the panelists to give just a brief introduction and overview of their roles. We'll start with Kurt, and then we'll go to Gary, and end up with Jeff. Good morning, I'm Kurt Kluznick. I'm with Lifetime Construction. Uh, I believe that a lot of you are already familiar with what Lifetime does. Uh, Lifetime's roots are in the fitness industry. Um, with that, we have uh, our own in-house real estate, architecture, and construction group. Um, and oftentimes we, you know, we build our own projects. Um, sometimes we go to the market for outside GCs or CMs, it just depends on the location, but we typically do between 10 to 12 clubs per year, um, along with all our other projects. So we're running a construction budget for builds of, you know, annually around $900 million a year. So I'm senior estimator in the pre-construction group and uh, happy to be part of the panel today. All right. All right, uh, good morning. I'm Gary Myers uh, with Park Construction based in Lansing, Michigan. We're uh, mostly do, we're mostly into construction management. Uh, we're doing about 500 million per year. We do a little bit of a uh, little bit of self-perform kind of in a separate group and we're, our markets are most of the commercial ones with K-12, uh, hotels, uh, retail um kind of a mix of all those different types of markets and we're mostly covering michigan occasionally out of state every now and then so that's and i've got about a dozen estimators working working with me so we're pretty busy now uh, and struggling with the inflation issues we're going to talk about Hi, my name is Jeff Sample. I am the industry evangelist for JOIN. Um, it's my job to actually stay on top of the things that are happening in the industry, the changes, um, not only the technology, but really the problems that the industry is facing and, and really dig in and have be a part of the conversation and help move things forward. You may know me from the Content Crew podcast or the Construction Dork, so if you're interested, take a look at either of those. Um, as we were talking pre, you know, the microphone setup's not an accident. Um, so it's really great to be here though. We love our, uh, our relationship with Beck and, and moving these conversations forward. So I'm excited to jump in coming off some great events, um, for pre-construction this year. So it'll be great to talk. Awesome. Thanks so much guys. Really appreciate that. Um, so without further ado, let's dive into the first question. So while we know that the markets everywhere have become pretty volatile due to the effects of COVID-19, um, we also know, obviously, this isn't the first time prices have fluctuated like this. So the question that we've got from that is, how, how have you handled material and labor fluctuations in the past? And Gary, if you wouldn't mind, could you kick us off on that question? All right. Um, it's, it's true. There's been fluctuations in the past, but I think this this year is probably, I've been doing this for, estimating for 40 years, uh, and this is probably one of the biggest uh, impacts to the industry, because in the past it may have been maybe one trade that may have had, you know, an up or down, or you know, if we're, usually it's the up, so now it's kind of, it's really involving a lot of the trades, because there's so many impacts of everything, and uh, you know, in the so sort of, you know, in the past it was a little easier to keep your finger on, keeping track of things. So now it's turning into a lot more of a, an effort to keep on top of it. So you know, constantly you know, checking what's the latest information from ENR or AGC bulletins, uh, what they're tracking and seeing, and 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 now you know one of the things. Uh, probably need to do on a lot more regular basis is input with the, so your key subcontractors of getting a read from them of what what they're hearing and seeing and the 
the suppliers who are sending out the the notices weekly, like uh, USG sent one out recently, said about well, 20% increase in drywall products, and yeah. and so it's a lot more to do to try to keep on top of that, and and then for us uh, being a CM, the bid results, it's like now after every every group of uh, packages we get back in, it's doing a deep deep in depth and you know, analyzing what what we're seeing because in some cases you expect that things going up, but there's also the issue out there of subs maybe not totally passing the cost on in the aspect of how much are they trying to keep work, and so it's a it's an interesting challenge in the current market. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kurt, do you have any insight as well into this question? Yeah, it's a little bit more challenging for us because we're a developer as well. So we're budgeting our projects for sometimes two or three years out from from uh, from today. Um, so one of the things that we're optimistic about is that steel isn't going to always be as high as it is, or you know, the fluctuations with with the labor markets aren't going to be always as um, maybe as chaotic as as they are right now. We're hoping that. You know, for the projects moving forward, that we're going to see the supply chain smooth out, and that we'll have a return to you know more of what we would deem as you know normal, normal, uh, normal pricing from subcontractors and our, our key material suppliers. Um, but I would I would echo exactly what Gary said. It's hasn't been one trade, uh, one vendor, um, one industry. Um, it's been. You know, it's been across the board increases that we've that we've seen. So it's been a challenge. Yeah, you know, Kurt, you and Gary both kind of touched on part of the big struggle with this recent fluctuation is that it, it's kind of unprecedented. And so Jeff, yeah. from from the software side, do you kind of have insight into, you know, what what's helped to create this bubble? Have you also do you I mean, do you agree with Gary and Kurt that you haven't really seen anything? Quite like this before yeah so i have a background in the trades and i've seen this before uh, not this so we've seen these these types of fluctuations but you're right guys it's it's really been more focused on a particular trade or the, the access to a particular material i think as my job is to kind of look into what might be causing it you have a force multiplier we've never seen before and that's this accelerant of supply chain issues it's not really one trade because what we've figured out is everything has to be imported everything has to be made available so it's not just a fluctuation of price and as kurt looks out two years i mean how the heck do you really plan for where are we going to be on steel production where are we going to be on lumber where are we going to be on shipping you know is this is this pandemic going to continue is it is it going to change things i i think there's a, a force multiplier that's really making it hard for groups to identify the problem and focus on it because it's multifaceted and in the in the past we could find you know say one material to replace or we could move to a more uh, off-site fab style to lower the costs and you know make it a little bit more predictable right right now we we can't do that we're having to look at a combination of of planning and and communication to figure out and keep everybody on top of where are we going to be you know what's it going to look like um and on top of we're also seeing that the non-residential market is is it took a big hit and it's not going to just rocket itself back so gary you hit on this like some trades are kind of eating some of these costs to try to to make it through and we're trying to tell them from the software side like our data and our numbers say you can't ride this one out. This isn't 08. You can, you're going to end up losing your best trades if we don't identify those issues, bubble them to the top, and try something new to handle it. I mean, that's really where we are in the business right now, at least from my perspective. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The, the other thing is weather issues. Uh, look at the impact when Texas and the power grid went down. I mean, the the effects are still being felt right now from lost production of PVC and anything involving, you know, oil. Yeah, like we needed a whole bunch of storms like Ida and 
others to come in and not only add to the need for recovery, but also the strain on the materials. If you're a roofing contractor right now, I don't know if I'm excited or shaking in my boots. I, I, yeah. If I need a roof on a building, I'm buying the materials yesterday. I can say, I can tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, Jeff, you kind of hit on it and Gary hit on it as well. Um, you know, okay, we've got this problem, right? We've got this, this crazy fluctuation, super unprecedented, multifaceted, all trades are being affected. What, what have you guys been able to do as of today to kind of handle this, to kind of tackle, tackle the beast for lack of a better phrasing? And Kurt, if you wouldn't mind kind of leading us off at that. Yeah, I don't think you can totally negate, you know, the market pressures that we're feeling. Um, they are going to ripple through to, you know, the bottom line um, projects that we're building and budgeting for. Uh, but one of the things that we've done is we've been fortunate enough, as many other contractors and developers are um, throughout the country, to have a stable of subcontractors and vendors that we worked with for years. So we're continuing to solidify those relationships. Um, and we're hoping through those those ongoing relationships that we, you know, not totally negate um, some of the pricing pressures that we're seeing here, but to mitigate, you know, the 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 risk uh, moving forward um, by, you know, uh, basically pre-purchasing materials if we can, uh, but we're you know a little bit hesitant to do that um, based on you know where we are right now. So we have. You know, done bulk buys in the past, and you know, so we're able to kind of ride out the storm here, uh, per se, um, in the short term. But you know, we are going to have to go back in and 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 buy the certain type of flooring that we use again, or the certain certain type of carpeting in here too. So, you know, we're, we're hoping by that time there's there's a more normal. But again, it's 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 really a communication issue with the vendors that we've used and throughout the years, and the subcontractors that we've used throughout the years to make sure that. Um, you know, if there is an issue that we work together as a team to, you know, resolve it the best that we can, um, you know, because uh, look, we're going to continue building. We've been in business for, you know, over 30 years or 40 years, and and we are all going to come out on the other side of this, and we want to come out on the other side of this healthy and stronger than we are today. Yeah, and Gary, did you want to add on to that? Because I know you talked about in the ENR daily, you kind of talked also about those communication issues, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, a lot of the things right now, and both Jeff and Kurt have mentioned some of that, uh, is um, roofing, for example, if, if it's six months out, it's like, I mean, you've got to have, figure a way whether you can do an early order uh, to get that. Uh, we're looking at design assist, maybe to, where it can come in to help lock in even labor is becoming an issue somewhat so locking in getting a contractor on board lock him in design assist so we get that more guarantee early before the documents are even complete because uh i mean if we're talking any more even metal roof decking can be anywhere from you hear from six to ten months and that's very critical of even trying to you know get a building up of the key piece like that is not available right away. Uh, we're, you know, we're even analyzing different material options because of some things are not available. So if the structure uh, is an option, do we look at doing a, a structural stud system compared to structural steel? Because maybe the impact of steel is not going to be as big on the on the studs and availability. So it's you know looking at uh, doing more masonry precast, so it's like trying to analyze what what materials are having, maybe more available, having less issue with price. So there's a lot of lot of uh, comparisons needing to be done right now to you know keep the projects being built in a timely manner, along with the price issue. Yeah, and Jeff, on on your end. Um... So kind of talking to what Kurt and Gary have brought up. What what have you seen right now? Like, have you seen someone in the industry right now really innovating their way with these with these issues that we're facing? 
Yeah, we're we're this this is the this is the diamond in the rough part. I think. I mean, this is a this is a a real force on on everybody, and I can't believe the software guy's the one who's going to bring up. You know, you do have to protect yourself contractually. Like, how does the software guy, the one that brings that one up? But there are some contractual things that you should be doing to to protect yourself because that you know that can that contractual relationship's important to protect everybody, but. Ultimately, you know, Gary and Kurt talked about communication and true collaboration, I think, is is the key, right? There's been this misunderstanding throughout the industry since I've had a chance to play on almost every side of it that, you know, there's gouging going on or holding back or, you know, a lack of transparency that I think the industry has an opportunity to break down. I think now's the chance that we have to kind of pull back the sheets and say, okay, here's all the great things that we're all capable of doing. And if we're enough of us are sitting at the trade, the, the table, especially what are considered our critical path trades right now and our general contractors, and we can be transparent about our opportunities to use precast Gary, to use, you know, prefabrication, to use, uh, you know, DFMA design for manufacturing and assembly techniques to look out. You are looking at maybe a 10% increase to do that change in footing you were talking about, Gary. But if you can guarantee you're going to get it in for that price, that 10% is worth it because your fluctuation on some other products is 20%. So why not increase it by 10 to get, you know, a, a predictable product that's being installed on your job sites? But you as the general contractors and developers, you just don't have access to all of those possibilities that are out there. The trades do. And creating this new system of, we used to do this trickle down, right? The, the owner would have an idea and it would go to like nine different people all the way to the suppliers and back up. We don't have time for that anymore. We have to kind of shift. And that's the opportunity here to shift to what we would call direct pricing or our direct possibilities where you, the owners or in Kurt, cause you kind of play that dual role. And then yeah. you Gary have the opportunity to present those things. Because again, I listened to, to Ed Zerinsky talk at ASPE recently about, you know, we're just not going to see the necessary recovery at the speed we want. So that's going to mean we got competition now too. And in competition, you have to win work a different way. And to win that work, there's an opportunity to create better trust and relationships with our owners that'll get them off the bench and keep them in the game. That's the one thing we can't let material costs, we can't let these inflations do is, is there's a true opportunity for owners to say, and Kurt, you said you were going to get through this. You're right. We are. Yeah. But a few people can ride the bench to get out and if they ride the bench that's going to slow the recovery so we got to offer them a different experience in the construction of our buildings of our world around us that fulfills kind of a transparency and a need for trust that that they didn't have before and that's the opportunity yeah and that, i think that's one of the things that our our group our company has always leveraged is we feel that we have a good um, reputation within the industry and you know we are heavily we are heavily invested in partnering on projects and we are what we feel is as transparent as we can be so if someone has a 20 percent increase in steel costs i mean i know that you have to check yourself contractually but it becomes down to you know what's reasonable too and you know we've got a working relationship with that firm for 20 years do we want to damage that working relationship in the short term for one project um, you know, it's a judgment call by management, it's a leadership at that point, and I would say that probably we would not go down that route. Um, you know, we're always cost sensitive, but, you know, we, uh, you know, we're, we're very pragmatic as well. So I'd echo exactly what you said, but yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, we can't afford to punish the good general contractors or, or vendors or subcontractors you know, it's good. we're going to need all hands on deck based on our, our growth plans that we have, at least as a firm. Um, and, you know, we're going to need their full participation to have them up to, you know, full strength here if they aren't ready very soon. Gary, did you, you kind of looked like you had a few other thoughts. Yeah, that's, that's, that's spot on. Uh, communication's important. The, I know a lot of owners are hearing these things in the news, but, uh, you know, it's really one of the first things they need to do uh, is sitting down with them and letting them know what the challenges are so that 
they're not surprised when they receive the estimates. Really talking about before they even see a number and explaining what what we are dealing with and what we're going, what we plan to do, and and so both them and the architect are in the loop on that. It's yeah, just keeping that communication going currently in the way the market has been. So to kind of follow up with that, you know, we're talking about a lot of opportunities here. So as much hardship and obstacles that the industry is facing, there's also so much room for growth, for innovation, for trying new things, for maybe finally fix some things that were broken that kind of got, you know, stuff under the rug, and now we can finally address them. How do you guys feel that this, you know, historic moment in time how do you think it's going to transform the industry moving forward maybe like five ten years down the road and whoever you know kurt i feel like i feel like you would you like to take a stab at this one you look like you're thinking sure. yeah no, i certainly can well you know because our projects we're really in charge of our own destiny um we we manage budget schedule communication um you know because we're, we're setting the tone on the pace on projects because we are the developer and in some cases we do build them as well um you know, I think the way that we're going to come out on this is, you know, again, it's going to come down to basic fundamentals. It's going to be, you know, selecting the right subcontractor for the project and, and in some cases, you know, partnering with them for design assist or perhaps even a design build and leveraging their expertise within their field for cost data and better ways to do things. Certainly, I think it's, we've got a, a good stable of outside consultants, you know, selecting the right consultant for the project as well, and then leveraging our own internal, con, you know, our own internal resources, you know, correctly so that we we put together the correct teams. Um, you know, I wish I could say it's one thing that we're, we're going to do. I think it's, uh, it's going to be a series of things that we're going to do that are going to make us better moving forward um you know it's it's going to be you know it's going to be basic fundamentals and and you know getting out to market and and managing bid bidding strategy um you know as closely as we can and and really kind of getting even more tapped in if there are oh goodness um let's say just for the tech down in Texas, for example, I believe Tesla's got a, a one billion dollar one billion square foot excuse me I misspoke a one billion square foot warehouse going on they're a gigafactory, right? Um, well, I've, I've got resources that are being flown down here in the local subcontractor community working on a project down in Texas. So, I mean, you know, it's going to be planning around those abnormalities within the markets where we're working too. And we do have a lot of presence in Texas. And that's one of the things that, you know, we have to consider now as well. And, and uh, yeah, again, I, I wish I could say it's one thing, but I think it's going to be just a general tightening up of processes and procedure and, and, and you know, um getting some hopefully good buys in the future you know because of our longevity and reputation in, in the industry so. yeah and gary did you want to add in on that yeah the you know, kind of theme we've been discussing uh collaboration it's it's um it's advancing in the industry you know the integrated project delivery was kind of the start of it and you know after Having done some of those, the it's a different view of how how all the contractors, owner, and architect work together, and I think that's uh, something the way that market has been lately. That probably that better collaboration is uh, definitely a, a good trend for for the industry in general, and I think it'll probably take care of some of the problems of if it was a traditional. Our bid right now uh, with the architect designing in a vacuum and the owner maybe not engaged and then them being totally uh, shocked on bid day when they get the, the news of what what's really going on. So the you know more of this collaboration I think is uh, goes a long ways to solving issues like we currently see. Yeah, and I guess I'd echo on what Gary said very quickly here before we move into the next topic, but one group, one industry, one individual doesn't have the monopoly on good ideas. Um, so, you know, drill down, you know, first thing, if I think there's an issue in the field, you know, I'd go talk to someone, I'd, I'll go to, if there's an issue with plumbing, I'm going to go talk to the plumber installing in the field, right? And and figure out, you know, what are you really dealing with, the, you know, hearing it six levels up. So, you know, I, I, again, that's just my two cents. 
Uh, I, I agree with both of you on, on all of that. And I think, you know, the rise of design build and design assist and IPD are, you know, a resiliency builder for us for the future. We, I think what this one has showed us is we have absolutely zero idea what's going to come next when it comes to what we're going to be dealing with. So, you know, blocking and tackling, Kurt, doesn't sound innovative, but man, really building and rebuilding your process and your your organization to be ready for that future and to be resilient so that instead of leaning out, everybody leans in when when things hit the fan, then the or, the industry itself is prepared. But I'm going to spin it because I get to be a little bit more of a futurist in the world. And Kurt, you kind of hit on it uh, without, I, I don't think, knowing. And this is where, you know, my ability to get to talk to a lot of innovators I think we're going to see more manufacturing come back to our world, like to our country. And I think that's a very interesting, you're seeing Elon say, I'm going to control these things that are critical path for me. And I'm going to, and I'm going to rebuild factories. I'm not building manufacturing the way it was. I think in the next five years, you will see us have more roboticized, more, um, modern manufacturing facilities and we're producing and controlling the supply chain to prevent those things from happening in the future if you're a builder right now and you're thinking about what my future world looks like and you're out there looking at you know building amazon spaces or working for tesla and working in those environments you need to learn those processes really really well because we're already starting to see it you look at companies like capture prefab that's that's a joint joint venture between a couple companies building panelized uh, exteriors. You look at Faith Technologies, that's a classic um, uh, electrical contractor that's really turned into almost a manufacturer on their side. I think that's gonna drive into our industry so we can control a little bit of our future. And you know, being able to, as a general contractor, be a better consumer of that. And as a trade contractor to understand where that puts you and that's going to be a fabulous future for us. So I think there's two big things going on there. And I would just love to see the industry modernize and be available in that in that new world, Kurt, so that and, and Gary, so that we can adjust when things happen. And then not only do that, but like say, OK, how can we get better and control this more? So we're more predictable. And, and I think that's going to be great for us as as not only what I think construction is, which is the foundation of our of our economy in this country, and really going to rise us out of that part as well. You know, we have we have great jobs. We have, we we constantly build in this world. You know, like you said, Kurt, we're 40 years in, and you're still going to build. People are still going to build. It's not going to stop. So, this is a great cornerstone, especially if we can shake off some of the old opinion of ourselves and and give them a new light. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I think all three of you have really been hitting on the two C's, right? Uh, collaboration and control. Being able to have more control of, of what of what's happening in house within the country, and not having to necessarily um, rely on a lot of other uh, outsourced things. So, what? Can can you guys dive a little bit deeper into what specifically you'd like for, uh, to see with control and collaboration? Like what, like in a more tangible way, like what does that look like? I think you've all touched on it a little bit, but maybe just even get a little bit more granular. You know, Kurt, I loved your example with the plumber, right? Like if you have an issue with plumbing, you're gonna go talk to him. But maybe on a like, broader scale, what does that look like? across the industry, throughout trade, throughout, you know, with subs, with architecture? Well, I think we're headed for, and I know people have been saying this for a while, probably a tectonic shift within the, you know, design and construction community on really how we promote each other and how we value each other. Um, I think that, you know, oftentimes it's one-sided, you're, you're in this camp or that camp, and I think that, you know, we're learning more, especially now, that you know, it's more of a symbiotic relationship. But we need each other to succeed, right? Um, and I would actually drill down to the subcontractors and vendors as well. Um, I can't build a building by myself, um, nor would I want to, right? So I assemble the best team that I can. You know, and moving forward, we we do the best that we can on that project. Um, and oh goodness, my hope for the future. Um, yes, I'm certainly all about prefabrication and 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 things like that but i think really it, it, it comes down to 
you know, the really how we're treating each other and the communication piece within the industry and, and mutual respect for what everyone's role on the project is. Um, you know, I need the guy that's pushing the broom doing construction cleanup just as much as I need the principal uh, in the architectural firm who's doing the design. Can't do the project without either one of those individuals. So, and together by bringing those individuals together, we build the team that's required to complete the project. And you know, the hope, our hope is always that we get there, uh, you know, on budget and on schedule, but or as close as we can, you know, to that pin. But uh, does that answer your question or? No, absolutely, Kurt. I think you really, yeah, give a solid answer to that. Um, Gary, kind of looked like you also had some comments for that one too. Uh, I think it's been pretty well covered. Uh, the the how we bring back more more of the production here in the country because yeah, we have we're we're seeing now the problem with uh, relying on things from overseas and I mean. Uh, there's manufacturing, auto manufacturing here in town, and they've got parking lots full of vehicles waiting on chips. And so, you know, it's, you know, even in our realm, there's there's items uh, that that maybe in the past it was, uh, you know, we did a hotel five years ago, and they they said, well, you know, we could buy this uh, fabricated millwork from from Asia somewhere and ship put in a shipping container that wouldn't be considered now because it would be the you know now we've got we we say you know we want to have a project done by this date so we've got to rely on something fabricated that we can control better because even then it was a little iffy but now nowadays uh, there's so many things that you know the shortages of material especially anything coming from overseas that just some other thing you can't control so i think I think the industry and how how they do it and how it's solved that's probably going to be it's probably going to be looked at a little harder in the future yeah i'd echo that too i think that you know maybe not necessarily you know 100 percent of the project you know being materials and, and whatnot being uh being fabricated in in the you know united states or north america or whatnot but i think yeah we are going to see a shift towards towards that again and some of the challenges, Gary, like you're, you're talking about with casework and things like that, that's one of the reasons why, you know, many years ago, we decided to open up our own casework group. We actually, one of the things that no one probably really knows was outside, outside maybe lifetime is that that's one of the reasons why, because we were having supply chain hiccups is that we rolled out our own millwork group and started actually fabricating our, our own millwork. So that was, that was a, you know, a hiccup traditionally for us. And we decided to capture that in-house and, and complete that work in-house. Yeah, Kurt, I think you're right. And I think critical path construction for a lot of general contractors is something we're seeing. So it, it's it's a great way to solve those kind of problems. But I want to take what you said earlier, because you hit the word I wanted to hear, Kurt, which is a symbiotic relationship. I think representing technology on this side with Bechtech and, and Join, I, I think this symbiosis expands into the new groups of technologies that are being made available to construction. I think the industry was force fed a lot of junk early on and it it's just it's like being forced your vegetables like cook them right don't just make me eat them right let's and i think the new wave of technology coming in that sees you your sees the construction industry as a partner right you said it you don't want to build everything no we don't want to do everything we want you to succeed here's a here's a yep. secret if you make money we make money if you yep. grow we grow. If you yeah. do well, we do well. And I think that leaning in of all of us leaning into the problems and solving them together, that's the opportunity to create a robust experience in the future and a different experience. I think we've left far too many jobs. I say this all the time going, oh, all right, we got that one done and we made it through change <laughs> order day. Let's go do it again. Why do we have to do that? Why can't we high five and say, yeah, you see all those problems? We slayed that and we delivered this incredible building and this incredible experience for everybody involved. We all high fived. Everybody in the supply chain took money home no matter where you were. And even an owner saved a little bit of money or at least spent exactly what they wanted to, which is kind of probably more where they want to be. And, <laughs> and we killed it. Like that. that's what I think 
COVID in the last 18 to 36 months of, or, and the next 18 months are going to teach us and show us. Yeah, I, I think I'd agree with what you said there too. And thank you for the kind words. Um, I, I think with respect to technology, you asked me 10 years ago or even 20 years ago, would I be flying a drone through my buildings to not only capture pictures, so I can do a 3D walkthrough and I don't have to physically fly, fly out on a plane and, and spend a, a day or two walking through a building. You know, if I've got a 12 story building to, to run through, I mean, great. You know, I never in my life did I think we'd be doing that or, or scanning a building with LIDAR so that I can get an accurate representation for as built or what's there now or, you know, um, doing time cards on a, on a you know, smartphone, you know, or, or iPad or tablet, you know, I, you, I would have, I would have never thought that, you know, so, but again, I think that like what you said, and that's one of the reasons why I like working with Bechtech and others um, is, you know, we do have this kind of hopscotch of technology and you kind of try to cobble everything together. And I think that you can take that holistic approach with the systems and programs that you're using the software that you're using and kind of all pull it together um, and get it to work, you know, and, and, and play nice with, with each other to use a uh, cliche. Hey, I, I think that's a huge win. And I think that, you know, that that probably is one of the things that, you know, Jeff, you're, you're striving for as well as everything else you've talked about today. So, yeah, I mean, we want to feed back Gary, you've been doing this for 40 years and, and Kurt, you said it, you would never thought you'd be doing cost codes through time cards on an iPad, but what if that's, you know, Gary now feeding your predictions of labor costs and time, you know, per linear foot on something in real time. Do you ever think you'd be kind of there? And I, I think that's kind of where we're at, right? We're like on the precipice of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, there's the you know, construction industry, you know, there's studies saying that, um, Productivity really hasn't changed in 50, 60 years, but uh, maybe that's finally going to start with all these latest things. Maybe that's finally going to be the the trend where we are seeing increased productivity. I know we're about to get the pull, but the one thing I'll say is, is those numbers don't take into account the complexity of what we build, the right. safety in which we build. Right. We injure and do things far better than we did before. So I agree with you, but I also poo poo on those people because they kind of give us a bad name. And if you really look at how we've done, we're doing a lot better. I mean, we are making strides forward. We, we tend to beat up this industry a bit. The builders I come across, I mean, it's rare that I come across one of those old builders that just doesn't get it anymore. The new builders are fantastic people that are really invested in what we're doing. So I think that's the the key. And I know you want to give us the hook, so I'll I'll pull back because I think we went over a little bit there. No, no, I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, but you know, I guess to wrap it all up, uh, what what are some of the last things you'd like to say to the audience, guys? You know, what you know, what what encouragement do you have? Obviously, yes. This is really unprecedented and interesting time that we're in. But what are you guys excited about moving forward? What do you want to leave with the audience? Oh, goodness. I suppose you're going to want me to go first since my name starts with C and not G. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the thing that I'm most, you know, um, optimistic about is um, the new generation of builders that are coming into the industry and their optimism. And I think that you know, that's gonna carry us through despite this pandemic. Um, and it rubs off on, on maybe some of our more seasoned professionals in the industry. Um, and boy, I wish I had a crystal ball to tell you exactly what's gonna happen with, uh, you know, the supply chain and, and everything that's related to the pandemic, but I don't. But, uh, you know, I am confident that we're gonna have blue sky and sunshine again here, you know, at some point. Um, it may take a little bit longer than what you know, we want as an industry or an individual, but we are going to get to this, and, and we will be on the other side of this. So I'm right there with you in the trenches, unfortunately. So, Gary, what about you? All right. Uh, I think the, uh, the information the information sharing due to the technology of everything, you know, being able to do that much more, being much more you know, open book with the owners and architects. I, I think that's uh, just going to be 
be or continue to take away maybe the mystery of what construction used to be maybe to to owners uh maybe this this will just make it that much more transparent i just think there's uh, uh the the changes are which are moving very fast are going to be nothing but positive yeah i, you, I think you guys both hit on it and, and i want to echo it i think it's you know combining kurt that experience that you're talking about with that youth and enthusiasm if we can unlock all that experience that built the world around us already and then combine it with new technology and new means and methods to deliver differently then the industry gets to grow grow fully and gary if that transparency if we can all in this supply chain begin to trust one another then that's really the foundation that we need to move it all forward so i think you guys nailed it there and and, and i just want to wrap a bow around it that it's if you're listening and you're thinking about something lean in take a one step forward you know there's this idea kurt you said it there's no one silver bullet to rule them all beck and join wouldn't be sitting here think if we thought either of us was the silver bullet there isn't one but take a step forward if it's a process if it's a problem if it's a technology if it's an idea take that step forward and see what happens and continuously improve and we'll get there i, I think we really will love that really appreciate hearing from all of you guys can't thank you enough for taking the time out of your day to come and be on here with us and have this amazing discussion uh to those of you still online please keep a lookout in your emails for the recording of this webinar even uh if you had coworkers that weren't able to attend they will also get a recording if registered and then i also encourage you please keep an eye on our back technology events calendar we will be having some more webinars coming up so make sure to tune into those as well thank you guys again really appreciate it we'll talk to you soon thank you very much Chris.